All right, do me a favor. Think of a character that you really love, one that stands out to you. What is it that makes them so special? Is it that they're the picture-perfect definition of a hero? I'd bet maybe not. Maybe they're actually not a hero at all. Maybe they're not even that likable. Some of our most compelling characters in games turn out to be folks who are not the friendliest in the world. And our next speaker, who brings experience from Thingy, Compulsion Games, and Sony Santa Monica Studio, makes the case that we should become a little more comfortable with some uncomfortable protagonists. Please welcome to the stage, Luisa Otto. Hi, welcome to Why Games Need More Unlikable Protagonists. Um, I'm very excited to be giving this talk. This is something that I've honestly been thinking about for quite a while, so can't wait to share my thoughts and findings with you all. But first, I um, just wanted to get into a bit about who I am. My name is Luisa Atto. I'm a games writer, narrative designer, and an author. Um, at every stage in my career, the thing I cared about the most was connection, which is why this topic is something that really, really stands out to me um, and is something I think is worth exploring. So I work for a company, we're called Sweet Baby Inc. We are a narrative development company based in Montreal, Canada, um, but we have babies all over the world. I myself am in Toronto in Canada. Uh, we work on narrative from all stages of the creation process. So everything from like conception onwards and our mandate is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. So before we really get into the talk, I always think it's very important to define terms. This is something I learned from my days as a psychotherapist, believe it or not, um, and it has served me very well ever since. So we're going to do a few definitions, but I first want to start off with the obvious thing that some of us may be thinking, especially considering what kind of conference this is. So unlikable to who exactly? Uh, I really do want to acknowledge that oftentimes whenever characters of color are positioned as more authentic, according to players of color, they might come off as unlikable, quote unquote unlikable, to white players. Um, this often does not allow us to make the distinction between uh, someone who is morally wrong and then they're just being a bit of friction between the player and the character because of a player's biases. I recognize that this is a very tricky thing to navigate, of course, but my hope is that this presentation will shine a light on why it is still necessary for us to write these typically unlikable characters, no matter what, to create better and more realistic representation across the board for everyone. Um, another thing I wanted to note here is uh, character-driven perspectives versus plot-driven. So, so this simply means that from a narrative perspective, you either believe that the characters drive the story forward or the plot does. I myself am a character-driven writer. Uh, I've always just believed that the characters influence how a story will go. And so that is the perspective that I'm operating from with this presentation and with this kind of uh, train of thought. It's exactly why I think we need more unlikable protagonists in the first place. So what does likable mean anyway? So I pulled a few definitions here. Uh, the first definition is from dictionary.com um, and it defines likable as readily or easily liked, which uh, personally, I feel like you cannot really define a word with the same word that you're trying to define. So we don't have to, we don't have to look at that. Uh, but then it also says pleasing, which is fine, I guess. Uh, then the second definition we have here is from uh, Merriam-Webster American Dictionary that says that likable is having qualities that bring about a favorable regard, which is also fine. Um, but I, there is one thing that I think is really important to note about both of these definitions. And that is that in this context, these definitions actually do not mean anything and there is no universality at all. Qualities that bring about a favorable regard could literally be anything. Um, I know a lot of definitions are defined by their circumstance and situation, but a definition this intangible and this lofty should not be the crux on which a character is built, especially if this character is meant to be our anchor in a new world and a new story. We need something a lot more than 
uh, like, oh, they're such a great guy or like they're an every man or whatever to help a narrative unfold. Uh, in my opinion, it is an incredibly weak foundation and we're gonna get into why. So three reasons to say no to likability. First, because leaning on likability breeds predictability, especially from, like I mentioned before, a character driven perspective. Secondly, we eliminate different kinds of stories when we focus solely on likability. So it really, really enforces a narrow, narrower story scope. And then finally, uh, my favorite point, to be honest, and the main feeling that kicked off my interest in this entire topic is that likability is 1000% fake anyway. Um, even as evidenced by the definitions, we can see that it really is not a finite thing. So first point, likability breeds predictability. Uh, and when I say predictable, I do want to be really clear here. I don't mean like dull. I just mean same. So fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just it's just the same. Um, so for those of us who work in narrative, I'm sure you've come across this as well. You're watching like a movie or you're playing a game. Uh, and because the main character is playing to a somewhat generic or like overly likable type, you begin to call out exactly how you think the movie or the game will go. And you end up being right on almost everything. Well, uh, sorry to say that's not just because you're a genius, although I'm sure that is a huge factor as well. Uh, but it is because these characters, if they're written solely with likability in mind, they are all the exact same character. So I'm gonna describe a character to you, a character that has been described as likable in marketing or public facing materials and forums. And I want you to guess who I'm gonna talk about. So this person is angry, but not too angry. Um, they've had a lot of injustice done to them, but they're still somehow very level-headed, level-headed enough to not be like very harsh with the people closest to them, the people that they love. So whether that's like a love interest or a family member, um, they have a vendetta, but they won't go off the rails because that would actually be bad. Instead, um, they kind of like mull it over. Sometimes they make jokes because they also have incredible wits, by the way, but are often seen as sad and empathetic. So as not to stir up like too much concern, even like that they're too angry from the people around them, even though they are. Um, but however, when things, when it really comes down to things, um, they are able to channel their well-guarded but socially acceptable rage into a weapon and they kill unchecked for the sake of their cause. At the very end, they complete the hero's journey um, and they get whatever they want. Everything is forgiven. Nobody talks about all the people they've murdered because they are so kind to their love interest or family member. The end. Um, I'll give it a few seconds if you wanna like type in the chat or even if you don't wanna type, it's fine. Just like think of someone. Okay, cool. So JK, there is no one answer because there are multiple right answers. I guarantee that who you uh, are thinking of is probably not the same person that I thought of. And that is completely fine because it still illustrates the point. When we have very similar characters that are steeped in not wanting to rock the boat or like needing players to relate to them and to like them, then we end up with once again, from a character-driven perspective, the exact same story. And when games are predictable in this way, this can affect things such as the integrity of the narrative, because now you have a character who's acting in a, in a good way, no matter what best serves the narrative, because to act otherwise would create inconsistencies in both the character and the narrative as it stands. Um, it also affects the, uh, the replayability of the game, uh, memorability as well. And to be completely honest, if the game is any fun, it is very hard to fight for shelf space when the game to the right and the left of you are very similar. And that is why we need to lean away from likability when creating protagonists. So then we have the opportunity to create different, diverse and out of the box player um, experiences and stories. So the next thing to note about leaning on likable protagonists is that they severely narrow the story scope. Essentially, we all but eliminate different kinds of stories from a character-driven perspective when we focus solely on likability and wanting players to play like a good character as opposed to a real one. Um, your characters will not make interesting choices. They just won't. They will not do things that will shake things up because they are fundamentally committed to making the right choice at all times. 
Um, one major pitfall of this actually uh, is our overall inability to lean into the disconnect between the player and the character. So I'm an author. I find the books do this very well. How many times have you been reading a book and you feel as if like, oh, like character A did this, but if it were me, I would do that instead. So that is exactly the disconnect that I'm talking about. Because oftentimes when we feel these things in books, we don't like stop reading. We don't actually stop reading. We continue and we're just kind of like, oh, whatever. Like letting character A make their silly little decisions should not affect the player, but it does. And we let it, we let it happen. We tell players that not only are you playing this like action adventure game where the main character is a mercenary with a hidden past, but that you are the mercenary 1000% in thought and in action. And that isn't actually like a very, very dangerous place to be. So here's a really good example. Um, when we don't allow for an understanding of separation between the character and the player, when we ourselves limit the scope of our imagination, we end up with something like this. So John Ebinger, um, who's a cinematic designer for several Mass Effect games, he is quoted on Twitter saying that over 90% of players chose the Paragon route, which is the, like, the good route, um, over the Renegade one. And in doing so, missed out on arguably a whole different perspective of the exact same game. Some would say that the problem lies in giving a, uh, players a choice, but I really, I don't think that's the takeaway here. To me, this is saying that people want to be liked, naturally, of course. Likeable characters are created because players do not want to inhabit someone that, um, that they don't like or someone whose views do not align with theirs. Um, we see this uh, even on the other side of things with villains these days. I don't know if you've noticed, you probably have, how every single villain has a very sad but like strangely empathetic villain origin story. And it's because we need to be able to humanize them, to understand them, so we don't feel so bad for liking them. We need empathetic villains. Like we need to like villains, which is a trap, in my opinion. Like it's all a trap. Because we are obviously not these villains in the same way that we are not these protagonists. Like the enmeshment is so strong that 8% of Mass Effect players would not even choose the Renegade option, which is arguably not like a bad route, but it is just not the seemingly righteous, good route of the game. And according to a designer on the team, um, doing so meant the players missed out on some really cool narrative content that would have enriched the story for them. It's just something to think about. Why do we want to align our personal views so much with those of the characters that we inhabit? Why do we need to like a protagonist in order to play as them? And what would it mean if we didn't care about that? And finally, we come to my favorite reason, the pettiest reason, but the truest reason for us to stop writing likable protagonists. Likeability, like niceness, is 1000% fake. And for this one, we have to go back to definitions to really understand this. Um, I don't know if you remember the definition for likable, but even if you don't, don't worry, because it doesn't matter. Uh, I want you to think now of the people that you have described as likable. And I want you to think about why it is that you like them. So you might have come up with uh, like a reason, like, oh, they're so sweet, or they're such a good listener, or I really love how confident they are. I wish I could be confident, stuff like that. So we have multiple different reasons for liking someone or something. And in my opinion, that is what we need to lean on when we are creating protagonists, not the fact that they are likable or relatable. Instead, we have subbed in definitions for well-liked to mean well-respected or well-read or um, well-adjusted, et cetera, when they don't mean that at all. Likeability is a complete veneer and we need to get to the whys and the hows of why we identify positive feelings with a person or a thing. And only then will we be free. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna give an example that's a little bit infuriating. So I had the utter privilege of being in a writer's room for a known IP project. Um, they're trying to find out ways to introduce this character that was known to new audiences. But it became increasingly obvious over time that what this team wanted to do was reintroduce the character and take away literally everything that made this character who they were. Um, they didn't want this character to have any of their vices because they thought that it would make players mad and very upset to have to see 
their favorite character this way. Um, which is insane. If you knew what character this was, you would, it's insane. Um, but they really just wanted to tone down this character's personality and make them what I feel was just like a shadow of their former self. Like literally just turn him into some guy. Um, I was actually in another room with that had very similar energy about a very cool IP and ran into like the exact same thing. The, the devs in the room didn't want the player to feel bad about playing as this character. So they began to take away a lot of very cool gameplay mechanics and story elements just so the player could like, just like casually coast along without any sort of emotional challenge. Um, they wanted the path forward to be like good and nothing else. And why? Because they didn't want anyone to think negatively about this character. This character is a protagonist. We're not allowed to think uh, poorly of them in any way. They wanted players to like playing the game and like the person they were playing as madness to be honest because who was this character if they didn't have these vices a person is who they are because of their experiences not despite them so i thought it would be good to throw in some examples of when likability was pushed aside for the sake of a more dynamic story or a gaming experience um some of my favorite examples anyway so first we have what i feel is a narrative and character choice that is still polarizing to this day uh, Joel at the 11th hour in The Last of Us, killing all the medical staff once he found out they were a danger to Ellie. This forces the player to turn on who we were taught are good people. Like throughout the game, um, you're only fighting the infected. Suddenly you have to fight actual human beings. There is no option, however, at this point to not shoot them. So suddenly you're tasked with that disconnect that I talked about earlier. Joel is Joel and you are you. It doesn't matter if like, you won't shoot those people. Joel has to shoot them as a part of his story and his character. Um, personally, I'm not going to lie. I didn't like this while I was playing because it felt like I had been lied to a little bit. Like here I was playing this guy and suddenly you tell me he's not who I thought he was, which was very well done, I suppose, but also kind of maddening. Um, but what I did enjoy about this moment was that it forced the player to reckon with just how enmeshed they had become with Joel. So it takes you out of the story by putting you in, and I thought that that was really well done. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Okay, um, so the same for the second example from God of War 3. <clears throat> During the final battle with Zeus, you as Kratos have the option to continue punching for as long as you want at the end of the battle. Um, like you can stop at any time, but you can also just like keep going. And I thought this was genius because although I wouldn't necessarily describe Kratos as likable in the first few God of War games, this action forces the player to reckon with and interrogate themselves, which I think is a very interesting perspective within games. When a player is given this kind of control, how will they act? What will they do? What will they not do? I think it's, uh, in this case, a very great moment of player intention, allowing the player to once again step out of the story by stepping in, in like a different kind of way. Okay, so now what? <laughs> We've gone through all of that and I recognize it's a lot. So I'm gonna break down some digestible ways to tackle this likability problem um, and like what we can do about it. So how exactly do we write more unlikable characters? <clears throat> well, the first thing in my uh, experience, in my opinion, is to focus on who the character is to the people around them. So here's a really great example from one of my favorite franchises, Final Fantasy. So in Final Fantasy 15, we have Noctis. He's the protagonist. He's a prince. And he's honestly pretty nondescript. Um, in the English language version, he heavily falls into the likable trap. And it severely negatively affects the game. Uh, but that's another story. So in game, he is often treated as someone who is rude and who's brash and stuck up and spoiled. Other characters berate him. They tell him to like wisen up. They treat him like a kid, all this stuff. But in the game, like as you're playing, his personality does not reflect or warrant that kind of behavior. As a player, I didn't experience him as someone who is like literally any of those things. So back to the actionable, instead of trying to create a character who players wouldn't feel morally offended by, the solution instead would be to focus on who Noctis is to those people around him. If they experience him as rude, then he has to be rude. 
I know it sounds simple and that is because it is, but I recognize this can be an uphill battle sometimes. If Gladiolus, who's supposed to like look after him is his shield. Um, if Gladiolus is cussing Noctis because he didn't answer an important question with a full sentence, then Noctis has to simply not answer important questions in full sentences, no matter how uncomfortable it might be for the player. We have to stay committed to the cause because I will say, um, had Noctis been a bit more brash and unforgiving, like they treat him as and like they say he is, the narrative of uh, Final Fantasy XV would have been about 10 times more engaging as a player. Then we have really leaning into the disconnect between the player and the character. I know I uh, talked about this a bit before, about the disconnect in books, but I'm really hopeful that this can work in games as well. Here's another really good example from Final Fantasy. Um, but this time is from the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, what I love about VII is a whole other presentation, but I will say that I adore how well thought out the characters are. Several of them have stark, classically unlikable traits, but that is what makes them so good, in my opinion. Specifically, <clears throat> when the game starts, we have Cloud, self-proclaimed -pro uh, ex-soldier, and he is like really mean, actually. He is short with almost everyone. He says a lot of flippant and like dismissive things. And even I found myself going um, like, oh, sir, like that's that's a bit much a lot of the times. Uh, but I loved it, like really, because I am not Cloud. And this plus the elimination of dialogue choices early on in, in the remake um, is the game's way of letting me know that Cloud and I, we inhabit two different minds completely. It didn't deter me from playing, mostly because I love uh, Final Fantasy and I am Final Fantasy trash, but instead it allowed me to really dive in and experience this world through a character and a person that I could never become. And I think highlighting that novelty is really important that you as a player might never become this kind of character and that is actually what is engaging. And then finally, one last way we can be uh, we can write more unlikable protagonists is to surprise use of the source. <laughs> this sounds elementary because it is, but that is a good thing because character creation is honestly hard enough on its own. So, say you want to write a character who is not likable. Um, they are not morally gray, but you know they're just like different. Um, so you get the image of them in your head. Uh, let's say you want them to be like confrontational, which I think is a good place to start if you're trying to write someone who's not like likable, stereotypically likable. Um, so what other words could you use to describe a confrontational person? <clears throat> Maybe like short tempered or like courageous. So all these words come to mind, just start to jot all of them down and you will begin to see the character forming in your head. That though is the easy part. Um, the hard part of course is writing to form. So similar to the first solution, if you commit to saying a character is confrontational, then you have to commit to it no matter what. So let's say um, when this confrontational character runs into a conflict while they're like in a group setting. So let's say it's an RPG, they're in a team. What would they do? So maybe the likable model would mean that, you know, they would think of other people first and they would try and get the party in order, whatever. Um, but a confrontational character would probably just run in and then later get like yelled at by their team or something. This is also, I think, a really great exercise, a really great way to see how character-driven perspective actually changes the story if you have a different kind of character at the forefront. So um, what would like a courageous person do? Uh, maybe they would run right in as well, or maybe they would try and like protect their team because they are not afraid of death or something. Like, you know, they have like a lot of courage, um, but maybe in doing so they would like, uh, they would like suffer some sort of like consequence or something and like be out of commission for a while like they're in a coma now or something, whatever. Um, but the point is <laughs> that the possibilities are endless if you actually hold space for a change. And that that literally is the point. Why do games need more unlikable protagonists? Because without them, we stifle our creativity, we tell predictable stories, and we teach audiences that sameness is innovation, which just is not true. Leaning into different character types and personalities allows for more possibilities. It allows us as designers and writers to really get creative and imagine like a different kind of game. I know we all love a good franchise. I've like 
what is it, thrown my favorite franchise on you for like a million slides, it's fine. Um, but also similarly, I'm sure we all covet those moments where um, we find a game that is just so different and so interesting from anything we've played before and it doesn't follow a strict formula and it has fun with its characters and its story. And that is exactly what can be possible for all of us when we think differently about our protagonist. So going forward, I really hope you'll start to think of your characters as whole people and as such, not be afraid to give them traits that are loud and wrong as we have all been at any point in our lives. Um, after all, like we all have the exact same spectrum of emotions as human beings. So it doesn't make any sense for us to deny our characters that as well. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you want, you can connect with me um, through sweetbaby at sweetbabyinc.com. Um, my email address is louisa at sweetbabyinc. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram as Louisa Onome, which is like my author name. Um, on Twitter, there's an underscore, I believe. But I will be in the chat for a little bit. Um, so don't be afraid to say hi. Thank you so much. Likeability is a sham. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting with that larger lesson about the difference between being well-liked and well-respected. I think it's a quality lesson for game development and also for life as a whole. Like Luisa said, a person is who they are because of their life experiences, not in spite of them. Thank you so much for your talk, Luisa.